Hello there everybody, it's Sabata92 aka Nightmare and welcome back to Steins Gate Zero. Now then, I do believe at this point we are now going into Maho Hyajo... Bleh. Maho Hyajo's uh, perspective, I think. No wait, maybe it's... Yeah, I think it's her, per her perspective now. At least I think so. Um, in the last episode, got quite the... Uh, oh. Got quite the glimpse into how fucked up the future looks now, and Jesus. Ugh. And we also got to see this character named Kagri Shina, which is I'm get which is a uh, Mayuri's adopted daughter. Huh. And apparently Suzuha took her with her. Hmm. Huh. So I wonder where she is now. And also, it seems like somebody um, apparently was spying on Suzuha and Ferris. So I'm just kind of wondering, I don't know. I'm still kind of early into this, so I'm not entirely sure what else to expect. So let's just throw ourselves back in. <sighs> Yajo Maho was fidgeting. She knew exactly why, but she still didn't want to admit it. Maho, Junbi wa dekita kai? Ah, hi. Hmm? She awkwardly stood up from the chair as Dr. Alexis spoke to her. Hmm. Nan desu ka? Sukoshi wa omekashi suru ka to omotan da ga, Maho wa my pace da ne. Dr. Alexis stared at her for a moment, and then spoke. It was obvious he was referring to her outfit. <laughs> Dr. Alexis was wearing his translator all the time these days. In fact, he had actually told Maho to talk to him in Japanese. Sate, Crystal Rintaro wa douyu kankei wo kizuite iru kana? Aou no ga tanoshimi da yo. You keep calling him Lintalo. Maho and Dr. Alexis were about to head into Tokyo proper. There, they were to meet Okabe Rintaro. It had been two weeks since they'd first asked him to test Amadeus. It was time for the first report. Of course, that was the reason Maho was fidgeting. She was nervous to meet Okabe. N no, to see Kurisu for the first time in quite a while. Of course, Maho was able to talk to Kurisu anytime she wanted, but since she'd asked Okabe to be a tester, she'd tried to avoid doing so as much as possible. That's fair, that's fair. She didn't want her conversations to add any extra noise. <laughs> Maho had wanted to ask Dr. Alexis that for a long time. If she was going to ask it, though, now was the time. Hmm. Dr. Alexis thought for a minute. Eh? She felt heat flush her face. In other words, he was right. Yeah, she was just of Akabe, not that she wanted to admit it. そうは言いません。私はクリスともアマデウスとも近すぎますから。レンタロウはいい青年だよ。いや、he is. I mean, to be fair, Maho, you make a fair point. もし彼が私たちに隠れて 
I can assure you that Okabe would not be that stupid. Well, Okabe uh, tends to go against uh, normal human nature, so. Maho asked herself the question and then realized the chance was almost zero. So, なぜならそんな事態になれば、クリスの方が対話を拒否するだろうからね。エムデウスはそういう意味でとてもめんどくさいシステムだよ。なかなかこちらの思い通りには動いてくれない。もちろんエムデウスが説得される可能性もある
その件についてああ緊張する必要はないんじゃない基本的にはログを提出してあとはあんたから見た私がどんな印象だったのか軽く聞かれるぐらいだと思うああそれだログだよそれを聞きたかったもしかしてこれまでの会話は全部記録されてるのか最初に話したでしょ私は私以外アクセス不可の領域にログを取っているって聞いてなかったそれを今回教授とヒアジョーさんに提出するのか多分そうということはプライベートのことをお前に喋ろうものならヒアジョーさんやレスキネン教授に続けっていうことかえいやあんたね今更あんたはあんたはあんたはあんたはあんたはあんたはあんたはあんたはあんたはあんたはあんたはあんたはあんたはあんたはあんたはあんたはあんたはあんたはあんたはあんたはあんたはあんたはあんたはあんたはあんたはこれまでに何かまずいことを話さなかったか例えば合コンでろくに女の子と話せなかったこととか Doesn't seem so bad. 実家が八百屋さんなのにナスが嫌いなこととか Not really a problem? ナスは嫌いなんじゃない苦手なだけだ I think I tried eggplants once, not really, not really a fan of it. If that was all, I didn't really care. Anta got a shiny what I stole Hanasta to Kinney. Christina, the on the cotoka. So then it's it. I was ready to grey. He don't know Kyoka. I might there. Jikanga that ever touch hodo, she can't get him a jirushi. Monogatari got Fuyo Saratek. So no nai yoga, positive and negative can you can't care knock. 印象的な言葉しか思い出さないことも多いそれに引きずられて前後の会話の記憶はねじ曲げられていくうん ?I'm sorry I kinda had to double take on that what? Can I just can I just go back and reread that please? Regardless of whether the memory is a good or bad one, it's common to only be able to remember words that left an impression, and that impression will often alter your memories of the surrounding conversation. I don't even know why I had to double take on that one. That actually makes a, a fair amount of sense. What was she talking about? まだ研究段階の不完全な AI よこれは教授たちにとって大きな壁の一つなんだけど実は人の持つ曖昧さをアマデウスはまだ完全には再現できていないつまりね忘れるという脳の高度な機能それを完璧には模倣できてないってことあ,あえでも ATF でのレスキネン教授の講演だとアマデウスは不必要なことは忘れてしまうってええ確かに忘れるわけど言ったでしょ私たちはまるで秘密の日記のようにログを取ってるって結局その中には全ての情報が残ってしまってるわけそしてそれをロードしてくれば忘却したはずのデータは私の記憶に戻ってきてしまう。OK? OK? うん。In other words, asking her to forget was a waste of time. 大体案はログを消すことだけど、私にとってログはバックアップだから絶対無理。Delete your logs? うん。You probably make mental note of that. Carini, Casho da Kesho, Kostemo, Nazi. Zengo no Bunyako Sancho Ste, Sono Fusizen, Nishoku Sareta Casho, Jido Tekini Shufu Stesima. Oh. Okay. Soredemo, 
何とか記憶を改ざんしたいというのなら大元のプログラムそのものをいじるしかない I didn't have that level of access and I didn't understand how the program worked at all So basically, until I told Kurisu why I called her Christina, she was going to keep asking. <sighs> What a pain. Christina? <laughs> <laughs> ハフラカされると帰って気になってしょうがなくなるのよねそれともあえてそうすることで私に構ってほしいっていう合図を送ってるねっはあてちゃんはお前だろこっちが大学の講義を受けてる最中でも他構えなしで連絡してくるくせに
あえて茶化した言い方をした照れくさいあ,あオリジナルだけじゃなくてえっ、ー、とお前と話すのもだ私いや、yeah. 何しろモニターの中にいる女の子と話すなんて一度もない経験だったからあっちょっあそれはどうもうんなんで赤くなってるんだあ赤くなんてなってないし、yeah, you are. ただ女の子扱いされるなんて思ってもみなかったからちょっとびっくりしただけで。あーイヴンナッリアクションは just like Kurisu。俺は。お前のそういうところが。好き。I shuddered。What was I about to say? This is a 3D model on a screen. A tiny collection of zeros and ones in the shape of a human. What was I about to say to her? ねえ。聞いてもいい。私たち。知り合いだったのよね。つまりあんたとオリジナルの私がっていう意味だけど<笑>答えたくないならそれでいいけどどういう関係だったの少し興味あるクリスティーナって呼ばれても私は怒らなかった怒ったけれどそれでも笑って許したうーん<笑>And I became too dizzy to stand. Dude. I tried to throw up, but nothing came out. Hands were shaking. That's right. I can't change reality. But there I was, trying to talk to Kurisu like nothing had happened. I was treating her like the real Kurisu, trying to avert my eyes from what I'd done. I was just clinging to Kurisu. This was wrong. I shouldn't talk to Kurisu anymore. The call was from Kurisu. Hmm. Come on, man. Kurisu gave up easier than I expected. Maybe she realized that as an artificial intelligence, there was nothing she could do. Realized? I was making her sound like a real person. And the second that thought crossed my mind, I almost saw an image of a bloody hand. I gritted my teeth and waited for it to pass. 
I should really turn my smartphone off until I calm down a little. It was fine just a moment ago. I got another choice here? Hmm. Okay. I'm not entirely sure why I should I should not have saved there. Interesting. I can choose to turn my phone's power off. Hmm. But now even hearing Kurisu's voice was enough to send me into a panic. I'd gone back to how I was a half a year ago. Back then, even hearing Kurisu's name was enough to make me dizzy. I shouldn't have tried to trace Kurisu's shadow. For now, I should just turn off the smartphone. But in the end, I couldn't make that decision. Oh! Huh. Oh. Okay, I'm really going to have to pay attention to some of the decisions I make. I gulped down an entire bottle of mineral water and caught my breath. There was still a little time before my meeting. I wanted to get some air up here and recover a little. I looked down over the scenery below the overpass. The city was in the Christmas spirit. The atmosphere was charged with excitement. It's the exact opposite of me. I took more deep breaths. I still felt like I wanted to throw up. I was getting a headache, too. If I went to Dr. Alexis like this, I'm sure I'd worry him. Oh. And then I realized that the two girls coming up the stairs were looking at me. I peered into the late afternoon darkness to try and make out their faces. One of them, the girl with the short haircut, waved. Oh! Hello! Konnichiwa. Hello there, Chie, and, um... Um... Slightly older discount Yukiko? Oh. They were Mayuri's friends and fellow cosplayers. I think their cosplay names were Kaede and Fubuki. I didn't know their real names. Which was Kaede and which was Fubuki again? If I made them worry here and they talked to Mayuri, it would cause a big fuss. I didn't want her to worry about me when she didn't have to. I shouldn't have come back to Akihabara anyway. I'd run into people I knew just walking through town. Should have gone toward Kanda when I left the shrine. オカリンさんっていつも this Fubuki girl must really care about Mayuri. I felt a little better after hearing that. Huh? Huh? The girl I like? An image of Kurisu appeared into the corner of my eye again. Oh, God. The feeling in my hands when I took her life came back. <laughs> no, c c calm down. Oh, 
あの私オカリンさん本当に大丈夫ですかあ,あ,あ,あ大丈夫 Kaede and Fubuki were looking at me worried. I got away from them as fast as I could. Damn. Whoa. X day protocol. Okay, now we're here. When I started the conversation with that, both Dr. Alexis and Maho looked shocked. We were meeting in a room at a luxury hotel in the heart of Tokyo. It felt like the sort of secret meeting you'd see in a spy movie. Or maybe it only felt that way because the old me wasn't completely gone. <laughs> Maho seemed to finally understand what I meant. And her anger was clear. Maho, むしろウィンターロの善意でなり立ってるんだよ。引き受けてもらえただけでもこちらとしてはありがたかった。ここで辞退しても無責任ということは決してないから大丈夫。Dr. Alexis smiled and offered me his hand. I took hold of his giant hand and shook it back, but I looked down, unable to look him in the eye. Sorry. <laughs> ケンキュスで我々が相手をしていた頃とはクエストの話し方がだいぶ違う人は社会的な生き物だ相手と助教によって言動を変えるそれをエムテオスでも再現できているとみていいだろうだからこそもうしばらくテストを続けたいんだ ちなみにやめようと思った理由は何かなエムデウスと話すのが辛くなったかいいえ逆です逆アマデウスとクリスと話すのはとても楽しいんですでもそれが And then I desperately tried to explain the feelings that were welling up within me, even though I still didn't understand them myself. I told them how scared I was that I was starting to see Kurisu and Kurisu as the same person. エムテウスを捉えているという意味で私も勉強になるよこんな言い方や感じ方になってしまうのも許してほしい何しろ根っからの研究者なものでね No, it's it's fine, it's fine いえこっちもわがまま言っているのは分かっているんです Mao hadn't said a word for a while. She was frowning and she seemed to be intently focused on studying Amadeus's logs. I, I didn't want her looking at me because it made me feel guilty, but. Huh? 
私たちと君との関係を今日これで終わりにはしたくないんだせっかくできた日本の友人だしそれに魔法も寂しがるしねえ教授<笑><笑>わかりましたえっ、like、giving in but at the same time I didn't want to lose my relationship with Dr. Alexis my goal of going to Victor Condre University hadn't changed at all え and then Dr. Alexis got a call on his smartphone おっ失礼ちょっと電話してくるよ、oh, sure go ahead マホその間にリンタロと仲直りしておくようにね。Dr. Alexis left the room with a mischievous wink. I was alone with Maho. ごめんなさい。さっきはどなったりして。いや。教授の言う通り、こちらがお願いしている立場なのに。アマデウスは今の私にとっては姉妹うん子供みたいなものだからそれを投げ出されたように思えてつい力になれなくてすまないあなたの気持ちも分かっているつもりよあるいはつもりだったかしら。マホサイドアゲン。自己嫌悪だわ。ダメね、私。うん。多分、全頭全皮質がひねくれてできてるのよ。そうに違いないわ。え？あ。全頭全皮質は。人格を形成する部位の一つね。情報のフィルタリングを行うこともあるわ。己の中の認めがたい情報を遮断したり、自己欺瞞を行ったり。あれよくわからない。要するに、むき出しの情動を隠そうとして、とっさに嘘をついたりするのよ。他人だけじゃなく。自分自身にもね。うん。OK。I kind of get it。今の私みたいに、難しい言葉を並べて自分を取り繕ってやろうとか、こういうことも、全頭全皮質がやってるんだと思うわ。That would apply just as well to the old me, ホーリン・キョマ。When I realized that, There was nothing I could say. Tare demo. So you could not the other to move. But I see what took a bit of heat on you. Tabu Congo mo Kigamuitara de Icara. Amadeuso, come at the day. Hono, Mizikaisi Candemuino. Kanga de Okoyo. Arigato. No problem. Mao flopped back onto the sofa. No. Kite eka. Chris no. Haoya no koto. Huh? Oh? My ni party no toki. Kimito. Reskin and Kyoji go hanashi de irno ga. Guzen kiko tanda. Chris no yeni. Sano. Nani ka atta te. Oh, that's right. They did mention something about that. What happened? Oh, Anokoto. Mao seemed to remember it quickly. She nodded. Chris no Kasan Kara, then Lagatano. Yeni Hokasaretan de Ste. Oh, Chodos on the Hiva, Lusuni Stata Kara, Dijobu da Tasoyo. Oh, that's good. That was a relief. 
After all that had happened, I really didn't want Kurisu's mother to have to go through anymore. I... Oh. I noticed the way she said the phrase. A cold chill ran down my back. What else is there? Mao seemed unsure if she should tell me. I urged her to speak. She nodded slightly. What? The FBI going into an arson? That seems kind of... Mm. Yeah. その証言によると犯人はただの放火犯には見えなかったってというと You mean it might have been these people referred to as the FBI? 複数犯でねなんだか特殊部隊みたいだったってほとんど何も喋らず火をつけたらすぐ近くに泊まっていた車に乗り込んで去っていったそうよ。こんな言い方が正しいかどうかわからないけど、手際がすごく良かったみたい。火の周りも異常なほど早かったらしいわ。Was she trying to say that it was no ordinary arson, but the work of a professional? I couldn't laugh away the possibility. Knew for a fact there were people like that in this world. Russian? KGB, maybe? Maybe not. Russian. First thing that came to my mind, whether I liked it or not, was Nakabachi. Half a year ago, he'd stolen a paper about time travel from Kurisu, his own daughter, and used it to seek asylum in Russia. Did that have something to do with it? それともう一つ。クリスが亡くなったばかりの頃、私たちの研究室でもおかしなことがあったの。地元警察と一緒に日本の刑事という人が来たのよ。日米の合同捜査で。クリスの事件を調べているって。うん。もちろん私たちはできる範囲で協力したんだけれど。何日か経って大学が警察に問い合わせをしたら、そんな刑事が日本から来た事実はないって言われたわ。じゃあ、その日本の刑事は偽物だ
the police never found out. They never would, probably. No one could prove a murder that had been committed by a time traveler. The police had announced that a foreign thief had snuck into the storeroom at Radakan, and Kurisu had been killed because she saw him. Supposedly, there was an international warrant out for the thief's arrest, because he'd already left the country. You! And when I killed Kurisu, there was one other person there, Dr. Nakabachi. It was eerie that his name hadn't come up at all. Russia. CERN, the time machine. I remembered the future that Suzaha, or perhaps I should say John Titor, had spoken of. She would said World War III was going to start within a decade, and it would be the time machine that set it off. The EU and Russia would be in a race to develop it, and then even America would intervene. That would be the spark. Was I? Were we? At the center of a chain of events that would result in the deaths of five billion people? Couldn't help but feel that way. I couldn't stop myself from shaking as I looked at Maho's face. That was dangerous. If she tried to learn the truth, there could be no doubt that she'd put herself in danger. Oh! They're not wearing their masks this time! The Rounders, who came crashing through the Veil of Night. And thank you for showing me that! God! My childhood friend who died in my arms after being shot in the head. And after that, the nightmarish and seemingly endless time loops. All the horrors that I had experienced in the Alpha Worldline came flooding back, and I fought to stifle a moan. After I said that, I regretted it, but it was too late. Mao's gaze had turned into a piercing glare. My panic was about to show. I quickly covered my face with my hands. クリスのことになると、つい無気になってしまうのは彼女のこと本当に好きだったのね。あいつは本当にいいやつだったし、本当にすごいやつだった。俺も好きだったよ。ええ。あなたのことを見ていればわかるわ。A heavy silence filled the air between us. I felt like I had to say something. Fortunately, Dr. Alexis came back just then. Sure! Mao and I nodded and stood up from the sofa. I was just barely able to smile back at Maho. I saw a dark blue van come around the corner of the underground parking lot. Its tires squealed a little. 
It wasn't a Japanese car. It was a station wagon that looked like a sports car from some foreign manufacturer. I didn't know a lot about cars, but supposedly if you purchased it from a dealer, it could easily go for over 8 million yen. Sheesh. The reason I knew all this was because the car's owner had told me over and over. The station wagon stopped in front of us, and there was a short bark from the horn. Associate Professor Izaki came, is, yeah, Izaki came from the driver's side. While I was eating with Dr. Alexis and Maho, he'd called me about something else. When I told him I was having dinner with the two of them, he'd offered to drive us home. Dr. Alexis had tried to refuse, but Izaki had insisted so much that he had no choice but to accept. He had a pretty nice car for an associate professor. This was the cause of a lot of speculation around the college. Some people said his family was rich, and others that he had the wife of some CEO as a patron. He'd once quietly told me the truth, that he was single and spent all his money on his car. But <clears throat> who even knew if that was true? Izaki was acting like he was a professional chauffeur, opening the rear door and escorting Dr. Alexis and Maho. Dr. Alexis thanked him and got inside. Maho went around to the back to load up her luggage. He grinned and poked me with his elbow. He was a hard guy to hate, but for an associate professor, he seemed kind of shallow. It was one of the unfortunate things about him. He waved to me and opened the driver's side door. Hmm? What was that sound? About the same time I heard the strange sound, a hole appeared in the window on the front passenger side. Izaki screamed and fell back on his butt. The rear window exploded. Oh, shit. I panicked. Was this some kind of supernatural phenomena? Those are probably silent bullets. I was too confused to move. And then in the corner of my vision, I saw someone. A man I didn't know appeared out of the shadow of one of the pillars. He was holding something strange in his hand. It looked kind of like a handgun. It was tiny, with a short barrel and kind of flat. I couldn't see any kind of silencer. Yeah, I remembered him from somewhere. I felt like we'd met before. Where? I thought, but nothing came to me immediately. The man was standing there mumbling something to himself. The fuck? お前にとって間違いなく幸せなのだからまたもしお前の片方の目がお前をつまずかせるならそれを上り出して捨ててしまうがいいたとえ片目であろうとも陰の無の谷の炎に投げ入れられるよ Valley of Hinnom. The name of a valley in eastern Israel, on the south side of this old city district of Jerusalem. The valley was once where impure garbage and executed prisoners were disposed of. It was always filled with fires, black smoke, and a horrible stench. It was also where human sacrifices were offered to Moloch, and so was feared and avoided by the people. The sight of this valley, constantly burning with unholy fires, became linked in people's minds with the idea of hell. Later, Gehenna would become a symbol of hell. The Hebrew word was Gehinnom, which became the Greek Gehenna, and later the English Gehenna. This is also why the flames that burn in hell are sometimes known as the Flames of Gehenna. 
Good God! There was an aura of intensity and madness about the man as he pointed his gun at us again. Izaki stood up, turned around, and fled in terror like a startled rabbit. That sound again. It was so soft and light. I couldn't even imagine that it was a gunshot. This time, the car's windows didn't break. And it didn't blow a hole in me, either. It, it, it missed? Was he too focused on Izaki? But he won't be that lucky again. Move! I pushed Maho into the back seat and crawled into the driver's side. Thankfully, the engine was still running. I slammed down on the pedal without even bothering to shut the door. The sound of a powerful engine shook the underground air. The attacker flinched at the incredible noise and vibration. But the car didn't move forward. It didn't move an inch. Shift. Shit! Dr. Alexis and Maho were keeping their heads low in the back seat and shouting loud enough to be heard over the engine. I took my foot off the accelerator. I glanced over at the gear shift. It was stuck next to the end. I. Uh oh. And then through the windshield, I saw the attacker ready his gun again. He was aiming at me. The look in his eyes told me he was ready to kill without hesitation. Crap! Cracks like a spider web appeared on the windshield. Something went past the side of my head. I felt a sharp pain, at the same time a ringing in my ears. And all the other sounds faded away and started to disappear. I felt myself passing out. And then Maho jumped over the seat and slid into the passenger side. My mind was pulled back to reality. I slammed the door shut just as she told me. Maho shifted from neutral to drive and leaned over on top of me to grab the wheel. I slammed the accelerator so hard that for a moment the wheels were almost spinning in place. Then the car leapt forward. The attacker was getting closer. We were going to hit him! I was about to take my foot off the accelerator when... Maho shouted. I gritted my teeth and did as she said. But there was no impact. Evidently, the attacker had leapt away at the last second to avoid being crushed. There was no time to confirm it as the car raced through the parking garage. We were going too fast, and as Maho was controlling the car from the passenger seat, she couldn't keep it going in a straight line. The car spun to the left and right, and I was almost flung out the broken window. I grabbed onto the edge of the seat as hard as I could. We headed for the exit, slamming into walls and pillars as we went. I could see an exit sign right in front of us. I pressed the brake and put my hand on top of Maho's, turning the wheel to the right. But that was the wrong thing to do. The rear tires slipped. The car spun in a circle. And then it came to a stop. I looked back and saw Dr. Alexis lying face up on the seat, giving me a thumbs up sign. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> I quickly put my hand on the door and got ready to get out of the driver's seat. But then I saw an old, creaky sedan rumbling towards us and shivered. It was the man from a moment ago. He was following us and moving really fast. Had it broken when we'd slammed into the wall? 
I grabbed Maho out of the passenger seat and rolled outside. Dr. Alexis rolled out of the rear door. Jesus Christ! It was less than a second afterward that the sedan hit. If we'd been even just a little too slow, we would have been turned into mincemeat. I stood up and offered Maho a hand, then moved away from the unrecognizable wreck that used to be a car. Yeah. Oh, God! <laughs> Jesus Christ, that is horrifying! Both cars were smashed together. The attacker's sedan was completely embedded in the rear half of the car we'd been driving. There was no way he could have survived. There were no tire marks on the ground, which meant he'd slammed into us without braking. I've heard. I had almost been killed. I was about to pull out my smartphone when the security guards heard the commotion and came running. The security guard nodded and contacted the police. Dude! I could feel a pulsing ache on the side of my head. A shot from the gun had grazed me. I hadn't felt that pain at all while I was driving. I fearfully reached up to touch it and felt blood flowing from my temple down my face. I gulped when I saw that my fingertips had turned bright red. I almost saw my Yuri when she was shot in the head. I almost saw Kurisu when I had killed her. The images felt like they were about to come flashing back to me, and I struggled to stay standing. Maho went pale. Okay! An artery located at the terminal branch of the external car carotid artery. It travels from the neck to the head, between the temples and ears. It supplies blood to the skin, ears, and jaw joints. Okay, that's kind of bad. Kind of. Dr. Alexis looked at the wound. When he touched me, I felt more pain, but I gritted my teeth to endure it. Okay, good. I put the handkerchief he offered to me up to my temple. Who was the one at the seminar? <gasps> what? That's right. It sounded like he was insulting Kurisu, so I shouted objection at him. That was the guy. Was this his way of getting back at me? Not a chance. Was he an extremely religious devout that was so against technology advancing that far? could faintly hear police car sirens in the distance. The hotel security guards and staff were starting to gather. Ah! 
And then Maho's eyes went wide. She, Ale Dr. Alexis, and the crowd were all staring at a single point. I looked too. And almost screamed. <laughs> How is he still alive? The man crawled out from the wreckage of the sedan covered in blood. And then he staggered to his feet. He looked like a zombie. All his limbs, except the one holding the gun, were pointed off in impossible directions, and I could see what looked like bones sticking out from them. Okay, this goes beyond religious zealot. What the hell is wrong with this guy? His stomach was torn open, and each time he crawled forward, I could see major organs covered in blood falling out of the hole. But he moved towards us as if he felt no pain at all. It was such an awful sight that no one could speak. The man unsteadily aimed the gun towards Dr. Alexis. He must have been on the verge of death because his arm was flailing around too much to aim. But Dr. Alexis's expression was pure terror, and he seemed unable to move. A shot rang out. Fresh blood flew out of the man's head, and his body was blown away as if it had been hit by a truck. He fell to the ground, still clutching his gun. He tried to crawl forward anyway, but soon twitched and stopped moving. He was still moved after be being shot in the fucking head? The crowd began to scream. <laughs> the attacker had been shot? Did he shoot himself? No, that gunshot was clearly different than the last ones. We just fired. I looked around. I could see several policemen coming from the entrance, but none of them had their guns drawn. And the crowd was nothing but security and hotel staff. I couldn't see any of them carrying a gun. So who had fired? And where had they fired from? and the way they took the attacker's head off with a single shot. Not just anyone could do that. Of course, no one told me. Afterward, the police took us into custody. We were taken to the police station and questioned until late into the night. The sun was almost about to rise by the time we left. The police took me home in a patrol car. Dr. Alexis and Maho were having the police take them back to their hotel in Waco, so we split up in front of the police station. We never did find out why the man had attacked us. Uh, that's, um... Holy shit! I was not prepared for that! I was not prepared for that nightmarish image, and I was not prepared for it to go into even further... Jesus Christ! Huh. Well, um... Uh, okay, uh, yeah, that goes beyond religious following. That is, d Jesus Christ. That's, that's, that, that guy could not have been connected with the Rounders. He couldn't have. I think. That guy was completely, he, he wasn't even acting human. He was acting like a perfectly trained, I don't know, zombie of sorts. He didn't give any shit about whatever damage was done. I mean, I guess if he really didn't care about his 
See, that's kind of now it's kind of making me conflict my or contradict myself. I was gonna say he seemed to have no real care about how his body looked or you know any damage to himself, but he still dodged the car. But then that contradicts that as he got into a car, a sedan specifically, and tried to ram them without breaking whatsoever. And with his limbs all fucked up and his body all completely broken up, he still tried to go forward and shoot them. And then some mysterious assailant shot him and ended him. I do not think that guy was connected to the rounders. Holy shit! What the absolute fuck is going on? God! Is there like another group that works against the rounders or something like that? I do... Or maybe there's like some cult following that just hates science so damn much that they basically brainwash everybody to, to you know, to, I, just, I, I don't know. That left me in such a state, I don't know what to think. And oh god, I need, I... Mm. Congratulations, Steins Gate Zero, you got me hooked. Uh, I... Um... Okay, yeah, that, that, uh... That image is going to haunt me in my nightmares tonight. Even though this is kind of going up in the day, so you guys probably have no idea what I... Well, I mean, there's probably some people in the world that are watching this at night. Hope you guys sleep well tonight. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Else I conquer the fuck!